Good morning, I'm Tony Momberger from the Redlands Daily Facts and we're at Ted Runner Stadium this morning with Bill McCalman doing another video interview for the 125th anniversary of Redlands celebration. Bill has been doing the 4th of July celebration for 39 years and on our Quaspa Centennial celebration of our nation's birthday, he will be celebrating his 40th year of running those festivities. Can you tell me, Bill, what was going on in Redlands on the 4th of July in the early 70s when you stepped in and took over? Well, I started out in 1974. Tom Ditchfield, that was um, a member of the Inner Service Club Council, asked for a representative, uh, anybody to come and help him. In 74, I uh, worked with uh, Dorothy Demergen, Chuck Demergen's wife, uh, former mayor of the community, uh, on the park activities. And in 75, um, I helped run all of the events with Tom, um, but just helped. And in 76, I co-chaired the event with Tom Ditchfield. And after 76 was over, Tom basically said, here's the files, it's yours. Now, and so you I've run it in, since 77. Was it a big um, celebration at Sylvan Park with the cotton candy in the dunk tank and then fireworks at Ted Runner Stadium? Well, that was probably the disagreement between Dorothy Demergen and I. There was about four or five organizations, uh, including the Kiwanis, Evening Kiwanis Barbecue that was in the park. And I said to her, I said, we can make this a lot bigger event. We can do a lot more here uh, in the park. And she didn't want to. And so after 74, she left the committee and I took over the park in 75 uh, and helped Tom Ditchfield with things here at the stadium. The budget in 1975 uh, for the whole event, I'm guessing was about $2,500 and the budget now is like a hundred thousand dollars and it was just a barbecue so well it was a barbecue and then it was a little event people came and they sat in the stands here at uh, what is now ted runner stadium at the university of redlands and you just waited until they could fire the fireworks show um, after we got involved we started doing things here at the stadium like um, in the late 70s we had the almost anything goes which was a group of community uh, notable citizens that divided up into two teams and did different events from tricycle races to um, rope poles to everything else, uh, including uh, our last and final event with the Almost Anything Goes, which was a soccer game with a giant six-foot soccer ball that we got from the YMCA, and too many people got injured. Oh, no. And, oh, just bad injured and we didn't do that again. Uh, I remember after that uh, 4th of July event, uh, several prominent citizens calling me and said, put me down for next year, I'm in because I'm gonna get so-and-so. And I said, that's it, we're never doing this again. Uh, we went into the 80s with the police dogs, um, trying to come up with things to do here in the stadium. We had shows with the police dogs. Uh, we started doing bicycle races on the track done in the velodrome uh, style. In the stadium? In the stadium here. We had bicycles start on both sides, different teams, and race around the stadium. We had uh, brought in some other bands. Um, in the late 70s, the 4th of July band got started and they came in. Um, and all of this is just kind of fill up space till nine o'clock when we can do the fireworks show. Um, by the early 90s, we started doing, uh, had, had, had sky, skydivers, and uh, we, uh, we enjoyed that very much, and everybody, we've had the skydivers ever since. The skydivers have, uh, have really enjoyed, uh, enjoyed jumping here. That's gotten more and more expensive as time has gone by, and then we had the flyovers in the, in the 80s and 90s. Uh, and for the last number of years, we've had the C-17s out of March, uh, who've been very cooperative. Paris Valley skydiving has been involved. Of course, a lot of the things that really have made a difference with the recession and, and everything else that's gone on is uh, the San Manuel Band of Mission Indians have been great about becoming sponsors of the event and uh, have participated the last few years, and it's really made the difference in our in our budget. You and haven't we, had to raise ticket prices to get into this. We haven't raised ticket prices in 11 years, 
and my intention for 2013 is to not raise ticket prices again. Anyway, a, a big thank you to, to San Manuel, and we appreciate everything that they have done for us, um, and they keep us going, so we, we really appreciate it. One year, I remember, maybe more than one year, the skydivers were uh, amputees. Um, well, I think, it was, I think it was just one year that there was one jumper that, uh, that had lost a limb. Over the years, we've had a couple of the official teams, uh, like a Navy SEALs team uh, and a Special Forces team, but pretty much the, the group that has worked up for us the last few years are all out of Paris Valley skydiving. And um, as you know, we have a, they bring a guy with them who's a, a, a sports announcer from San Diego. Yeah. But he really is a skydiving junkie. And all these guys come out and, and jump for them, um, I think, to get free skydiving at another time over at Paris Valley. But you'll, you know that the, the guys that come into our stadium are extremely high-level professionals. Um, you have to be to jump into a crowd the way these guys do. Now, it seems that we've, we've kind of hit the, hit the traditions. We've kind mm -hmm. of established at this point. We have the 4th of July band performances. We have the flyovers and we have the skydivers and, um, and the dancing from a cover band until the fireworks. Start. Right. How do you gauge, you've described all of these different um, things for entertaining the people, how do you gauge which are the keepers? What's successful? Well, 39 years of experience and you just do it enough times and it's like the almost anything goes in the 80s, we realized after about four years that it, it had gone as far as it could go and we needed to stop doing that mm -hmm. before somebody really got hurt and and we did. Um, the things that have worked, uh, I remember one year the Air Force could not give us a flyover and I literally had people when the event started and we didn't have a flyover, I literally had people coming up to me and saying that they wanted their money back. Oh. They were so upset. And, you know, we said, well, you know, all of this is a prelude to the fireworks at nine o'clock. Um, but there were people that were upset. So we have been very fortunate uh, with, with the C-17 flyovers that we've had for a number of years now. Okay. Now, what about the, um, the celebration at Sylvan Park that goes on during the day? Well, uh, the Sylvan Park activities uh, have been run the last few years by George Barrich that's got uh, an insurance business in downtown Redlands. Uh, George has done a great job. Um, we kind of changed things a couple of years ago um, with just coming up with a flat fee for the groups in the park. And it, it's not a substantial fee, but it's still a, a fixed fee and we've literally tripled the park income. And you're um, talking about Vendors and vendors. That's up, right. You're not talking to attend. There's no fee. No, there is no fee. There's no fee. There, the only fee there is is seven dollar advance purchased for tickets to come to the to the fireworks show. Um, we had like I'm guessing about twelve thousand five hundred people inside the stadium, and about another twelve thousand people within about a five block radius around the stadium sitting on the outside. Mm -hmm. uh, it's almost as crowded sitting outside on the grass as it is sitting inside, but you can't quite see the show or, or hear what's, what's going on. So Now at Sylvan Park, the festivities have been covered by newspapers over the years. Right. And I don't think I've ever seen a story about the Sylvan Park celebration that didn't use the word old-fashioned, small town, hometown celebration. It's truly Uncle Sam and apple pie. It, it is. It is. I mean, there's there's so many groups. There's about 50 groups now. Um, in the early 70s, there was about four or five. There are now literally 50 plus groups that participate in the park. A couple of years ago, the the Fourth of July parade, which is run by Tim and Micah Maroney, um, moved to the morning, and that has been a blessing. It, it really has. We used to. We always had it in the evening or the the late afternoon. Uh, and it was just too hot in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. At 10.30 in the morning, everybody has a great time and it's, it's fun, it really is. Um, so we were very happy that we moved the parade to the morning. Um, it didn't really step on anybody else's show. The, 
the Redlands Fourth of July band does its official opening ceremony at noon at the park, uh, and then does another show at 1:30. Um, so everybody's very happy about how things, but things tend to wrap up about 3, 3.30 in the afternoon instead of going until 5.30 uh, to 6 o'clock. Uh, and we still have a good crowd that comes to the stadium, so that's, that's important. Yeah. Now the t-shirts, is that your project? Or it is. How did that get started? We started that in the late 70s, coming up with an idea to raise a few extra dollars. Um, and it, it, I gotta say, it's one of the hardest things with the 4th of July activities because you have to come up with a new idea every year. Uh, we've done every uh, historic building in town several times, um, but I can tell you that this next year we're looking at doing um, the Redlands Post Office. Uh, there's a beautiful piece of artwork that was done um, by Stoddard for the University of Redlands. The University of Redlands owns the artwork and has allowed us to use it. I think we're going to use that next year as that looks like it's going to become part of the historical museum uh, situation in Redlands. So it makes it a, a worthwhile candidate. And uh, I can't tell you how happy I am that we actually have an idea already for what we're going to do next year. Because sometimes we're worrying about it in, still in April as to what we're going to come up with. And just to define, um for the non-Redlanders who don't know what I'm talking about, every year you put out a 4th of July t-shirt. Commemorative t-shirt, right. Commemorative t-shirt, mm -hmm. it has a little something on the front, it has a big thing on the back. Right. And they're for sale in advance of the of the festivities. At, at the city clerk's office in Redlands. And it's, it's got Redlands local stuff on it. Yeah, it does, it does. It's not gonna have the Capitol or the White House or anything. Well, like I remember that. the year the, that we came out and did um, an orange crate label. And I think we actually, we were the first ones to ever do an orange crate label. And that year we actually sold almost, almost 4,000 t-shirts. It was so popular. But within about five weeks of the 4th of July at market night in downtown Redlands, there was about three other groups that had printed up orange crate label t-shirts and were selling them at market night. Oh. Um, so we did it a couple more times, but it kind of uh, um, was not worth it after that. There was too many uh -huh. doing that. Okay. Now, how is the 4th of July celebra celebration for the Quasco Centennial going to be bigger? <sighs> well, <laughs> You know, somebody asked me the other day about, you know, why do you keep doing it? He says, well, because we just have to do exactly what we did last year and we just do it a little bit better than we did last year. Uh, we never know exactly. Pyro Spectacular and Jeff Martin with Pyro Spectacular uh, and the Souza family just always does a fantastic job. Um, and one of the secrets, I think, of the 4th of July celebration is that after each show, if every, most of the people that are there think it's the best show they ever saw, then you've done a good job. Okay, I gotta interrupt you for a second. Okay. The Redlands Fireworks Show is, re, is the show in Southern California. It's, it's, it's the one everybody It's about the biggest about. show in, in Southern California, it really is. Is it because of Jeff Martin or? Well, it's partly because of, it's kind of become the home show for Pyro Spectaculars. Um, all of these guys, Pyro Spectaculars probably does over 500 shows on the 4th of July, but when it comes to their own employees, the families of their own employees, this is where they tell their families to come, is to Redlands. This is where the good show is going to be. Uh, and it is. And I mean, it's a great show. Been? How long when, how, when did you score them? Well, we started up again with Pyro Spectaculars in the mid-90s, and they've been doing it ever since. Um, they were the company that was doing it uh, in, in the beginning, uh, back in the 60s and the 70s. And in the 80s, we had a couple of other companies that came in, um, Zambelli and, and a couple of others that we, that we tried. San Diego Fireworks uh, we used for quite a number of years. San Diego Fireworks did a great job. But in the mid-90s, uh, uh, the Sousa family and, and Pyro Spectaculars bought uh, San Diego Fireworks and oh. and they kind of inherited us and it was kind of interesting because they kind of came to me uh, hat in hand and said you know we really want to do a good job for you 
and we're giving you our best guy, Jeff Martin, uh, and he has been the best guy um, imaginable. I mean, by, by 6 o'clock, 6.30 on the 4th of July, he and his crew, they are all finished. Everything is ready to go. Everybody's showered and, and relaxed and, and taking it easy and waiting for the fireworks show. I can remember years when we had people still scrambling at, at five minutes of nine in the evening. Oh, no. um, it's not like that anymore. So okay. they've done a great job for us. A um, couple more things I want to cover before we, I get you out of the sun. I know it's being directly honest. The, the Quasqua Centennial obviously is, is a major thing mm -hmm. to be marking for the city. You were here and doing the 4th of July celebration for the nation's centennial. And right for the uh, city centennial. Yes. What kind of things made those celebrations, if anything, what what did you do to make those special? Well, the you you, I, I happen to remember the the city centennial. Um, instead of using any set pieces, we used a laser show, and we had it designed specifically, you know, for this. Um, I don't know that I would do that again. You know, we did it once and it was interesting. Uh -huh. I, I, I don't know that I would do it again. I think Jeff can do, can do a better job than, um, than what the lasers do. Uh, I mean, it was interesting. Uh, and uh, Larry Burgess narrated it and it was a story about Redlands and about the founding of Redlands. Oh. Uh, so it was, it was very, very good. This year, uh, we haven't determined everything that we're going to do for the 4th of July, but I can just promise you it's going to be bigger and better than ever. Bigger and better. All right. Now, you had mentioned um, the, the roots, the, all the way back to the beginning, mm -hmm. the 4th of July celebration in Redlands, was the gold star mothers of the Vietnam veterans. That's, that's correct. In 1968, uh, a number of the gold star mothers got together um, to try and get some people to, to organize a celebration for the 4th of July. Um, Tom and Amer Ditchfield were the persons, really Amer Ditchfield, um, got it going. And as far as doing something here at the stadium, um, I'm guessing that in 1968 the budget might have been $1,500 or $2,000. That would have been, that would have been the maximum. Um, but we had some, uh, we, we grew from there. Um, I, I took over after the 76 show on my own uh, in 77. Uh, obviously my wife Diane has, has helped all these years. My, my daughter who uh, was 40 years old this year, she has been here literally every year of her life. Uh, somebody asked her to go away on the 4th of July to go down to the river with some friends and. Um, she said, my family's at the University of Redlands on the 4th of July, that's huh. where we go. And uh, obviously my son-in-law works on it. Um, my 11-year-old grandson, Jack, this was his first year of working with the, uh, the road crew that puts out all the barricades and puts out all the banners and puts the, the, uh, all the tarps up around the stadium. And, and he worked with that crew this year and he thought it was great. So we've had we've had good help over the years, and uh, so is this going to be a dynasty? Is somebody I don't going to take over. I don't know. Uh, my son-in-law and daughter and grandchildren live in San Diego, so uh, it's a it's a little bit tough to uh, to do something. Um, when do you start? But, well, like the fifth of July. You know, we start oh, the next yeah. day, literally talking about what are we going to do next year and how are we going to do it different. Um, what can we change? What are we going to keep the same? What are we unhappy with? Um, we always have a critique meeting, although we put together a luncheon or something by the middle of August to talk about what happened. Um, we talked to the guys at the university here and how did things go with them, how did, how did everything work out. Um, we talked to the police department uh, about you know, how things went as far as getting everybody out of here. Everybody, it, it's amazing that people talk about, oh, it takes so long to get out of there. Um, but I'll tell you, our show's over at 9.30. And at 10 o'clock, there's like almost nobody here and nobody in the parking lot. So it didn't take them that long to get out of here. It just seemed like maybe it took them. You know, I guess if you're sitting in your car behind somebody else, it, uh, it takes a while. But uh, it, it worked out very well. And let's give props to uh, there are school groups that come and help with the cleanup. And oh, yeah. The, the Rev Speech Boosters have been great. They've done it for years. Over the years, we've had football teams and soccer teams and 
Those guys are just posers. You get the speech team out here and the speech team, you say, clean up the stadium. They don't question what it means and they get the job done. They do a super job. That's wonderful. All right, what did I forget to ask? What really interesting morsel have you been holding out on? Oh, interesting morsel. Um, I don't know. I think we've talked about uh, about all of it. We appreciate uh, the University of Redlands has made a, a huge commitment over the years and continues to make a huge commitment to seeing that the event happens here on the University of Redlands campus. And uh, we really appreciate all of their help and their participation too. The end of the first week of June, we'll have tickets available for the 2013 Redlands 4th of July celebration. So get your tickets early.